you're going to see how these patterns right here with Jesus and Father and Son are literally connected to each other. And I knew about these patterns before, like separately, but I had no idea they actually directly connect to each other. So you're going to see that that happens in the text of the Bible itself, which is how we know that this is God authenticating it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And watch what happens. This is going to be the most shocking information where it is so interwoven with the text itself, with the number itself, the number that is spoken by Jesus Christ to Peter in Matthew 18, 22, in regards to the number of times you are to forgive your brother. So let's go there. Matthew 18, 22. Matthew 18, 22 is when, well, I guess we can start at verse 21. We'll be getting into this whole passage a little bit later in context because it's pointing to another passage. It's, it's connected with another passage, which makes all of this interwoven together. But we'll get to that in a little bit. So Matthew 18, 21 says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till so seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. So there it is. The Lord Jesus Christ said until seventy times seven, representing that is the perfect number of times, the absolute peak. That's how many times you have to forgive your brother. It basically represents unlimited forgiveness of sins towards your brother. He could have said never stop forget forgiving. You know, forgive always. He could have said something along that line, but instead, Jesus Christ gives a specific number, and that number proves that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and it proves that this Bible is from God beyond any reasonable shadow of a doubt. Okay, so this chart, by the way, I'll make this available. Um, there's a lot to cover here. I'm not going to be able to get through every single thing, but I'm going to cover the main stuff. Um, but just so you know, so this, this chart, I, I started to do something that I'll try to do in all future charts, where in the top corner, I have this little badge that says P1 in this case. And what happens is, if you download this chart from the, um, the, the visual charts you know, website, the link in the description, you're going to get a folder full of files so you can verify this. And I, I encourage everybody to fact check everything I am telling you because you're going to need to see that this is real for yourself. This is not just me making up stuff and trying to get a bunch of views or something like that. This is real. This is happening in the Bible in our hands, in the hands of millions and millions and millions of people around the world. This exists. So what you're going to get is a folder like this. So I have everything labeled very clearly. Uh, so where it says P1, P2, P3, P4, those are all scattered throughout the chart. Um, you're going to need King James Pure Bible Search for this. It's a program that is 100% free for the computer. And what happens is when you have that search program, you're able to just simply double click on, for example, P1, and it, it's going to load that search file into the program. So this one is father and son showing up 70 times, seven times. You're going to be able to just simply verify everything in this chart and make sure that what I'm showing you is correct. Okay, now I'm going to cover as much as I can and I'm going to get to as much detail as I can in as short as time as I can. Okay, so before we get into the numbers, we need to look at what Jesus Christ is saying about himself and what the scriptures in general are saying about Jesus Christ. If we go to Luke 22, 70 to 71, it says, Then said they all, Art thou then the Son of God? Now this is when Jesus Christ is on trial. So he's already gone through his ministry and he's, it's right before the crucifixion. It says, Then said they all, Art thou then the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. 
And they said, What need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. So this is why Jesus Christ is being condemned to be crucified by the Jews, by the high, high priest, by the elders. They are condemning Jesus because he is claiming to be the Son of God. Now, in John 19, 6-7, they even say this to Pilate. It says, When the chief priest, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. I'm trying to show you how big of a deal it is that he is claiming to be the Son of God. So, they directly tell it to a guy who doesn't even believe in God. Like, this, according to our law, he has to die because he claims he's the Son of God. Okay, Matthew 27, 40 to 43 says, Now, this is when Jesus is on the cross. Okay, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. And then in verse 43, he trusted in God. So these are the people who are mocking him while he's hanging on the cross. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. So as you can see, the reason that Jesus Christ is being crucified, he's claiming to be the son of God. Mark 15:39. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. Okay, so the centurion surely hears all these people talking, like accusing Jesus of, you know, if you're the Son of God, if you're the Son of God. The centurion's going to be hearing all that. And when Jesus dies and when he cries out, when the, the, the earthquake happens and the centurion's like, this guy is the son of God. Like, what is happening right now? Okay, Romans 1.4. And declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So his resurrection proves that he is the son of God. It's the proof from God the Father that Jesus Christ is his son because he raised him from the dead. All right. Now, 1 John 5, 12 13, one of the most important passages says, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So if you do not have the Son of God, you do not have life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So if you do not have the Son of God abiding in you today, if you are not born again, what's at stake? Eternal life, according to this. Is this God's word, or is it not? Okay, so in the Bible, there are 70 times 7 mentions of Father, and son. Okay, now there's so many different things just with this alone that we need to talk about real quick. And one of the things, the one, probably the most important thing to talk about is we are excluding anti-mentions. And that's what we're going to be doing for basically this entire chart. Now, what is an anti-mention? So up here, by the way, I'm going to have this Figma link. So you can go and you can zoom around and scroll wherever you want. And you can... Um, Zoom in and out. I don't know if you if you want to print this, you can. I don't think it's going to be very good because the font might be too small. But if you're on a computer, you're going to be able to zoom in and go wherever you want on this chart. So an anti-mention is over here in this chart right where it says anti-mentions. And when I say anti-mention, I'm talking about something that is identical in capitalization and appearance and word but it's not talking about the same person. With father, for example. There, you see how it says raw 260 and pure 259? There's a difference of one. 
And that's because there's one anti-mention. So the one anti-mention is in Luke 16.24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus. So this is, if you go back and read Luke 16, this is the rich man in hell talking to Abraham across the gulf. He cries unto Abraham. Now Abraham's in paradise on the other side of that gulf, but he's crying unto Abraham and he calls him Father Abraham. That's not talking about God the Father, right? That's talking about Abraham. Now, every other instance in the Bible where you see Father capitalized, besides this one, it is talking about God. So that's why we, we say the raw count is 260 of Father when it's capitalized. But the pure count, when we're actually talking about God, is 259. Okay, so we are looking at the pure accounts. We are eliminating the anti-mentions, the things that look like, but they're not actually. Okay, so with Sun, there's a whole bunch of them. And one of the reasons I believe this pattern has laid concealed for so long is due to the fact that you have to go and eliminate, you have to actually do your research, you have to go through every single mention and make sure that it's actually talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There's a lot. There are 66, in fact, um, anti-mentions of Son. Now, 61 of those happen all in the book of Ezekiel. For example, in Ezekiel 2.1, it says, And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. That's just how God talks to Ezekiel in the book of Ezekiel. He just calls him Son of man over and over and over again. And because that's the start of a quote... It's capitalizing that word. It's not capitalizing it because Ezekiel is Jesus Christ. It's capitalizing it because it's the beginning of a sentence, the beginning of a quotation. Okay, so that happens a lot. And here are all the references in Ezekiel, if you want to fact check, where that happens. So all of them are referring to Ezekiel. None of them are referring to Jesus Christ. And then you can just go through the rest of these and you'll see that this is not, these mentions of son are not talking about Jesus Christ. Even though they're capitalized, they're not talking about Jesus Christ. Okay, so once you remove the anti-mentions, there are other places where you see Father capitalized talking about God, but it's not capitalized. For example, in Deuteronomy 32, 6, 2 Samuel 7, 14, 1 Chronicles 17, 13, Isaiah 63, 16, Isaiah 64, 8, Jeremiah 3, 4, 19, Jeremiah 3, 31, 9, Malachi 1, 6, Malachi 2, 10. If you look at those references of Father, it's talking about God the Father, but it's not capitalizing the F in the King James Bible. So why is it not capitalized? I have no idea, because there is one capitalized mention in the Old Testament, Isaiah 9, 6. So it's not just because they're in the Old Testament. And same thing with the Son. There, there, there is capitalized mentions of Son in the Old Testament, and there are lowercase mentions of Son in the Old Testament when they're referring to Jesus Christ. So the fact that every single King James Bible printed today has this pattern, despite all that, it's kind of hard to believe it just randomly happened, especially when Jesus Christ spoke this equation. Now, you're going to see how when he spoke this equation, it's literally connected to this. <laughs> but we, because he's tell, telling it to Peter, we'll get into that soon. But this is why Jesus Christ was crucified. He claimed to be the Son of God. That God was his Father making himself equal with God. So Father and Son is mentioned a perfect 70 times 7 times. In Revelation, if you combine it, it's 7 times. And in the Gospels, Seven times seven times seven occurrences of the exact same search phrase. So there, there are different ones like P2 and P3, but all you need to do is just load P1 and in the filters here so that you can see it's the exact same parameters. Just uncheck everything and then you can just check Revelation. There's seven occurrences. And then if you uncheck Revelation, you just check the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 343 mentions, which is 7 times 7 times 7 mentions of Father and Son. Okay, so in the Gospels, so you just saw how God and Son in the entire Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, show up 70 times 7 times. In the Gospels only, if you look at God and Father, 
Now, this is when you can join them as one mention, when you see them as one mention. So when you see, only one time that happens, by the way, in John 6, 27, for him have God the Father sealed. So God the Father, it's just put all together as one. So if you include that as one mention, you get 70 times 7 mentions of God and Father in the Gospels. So that's wild because you start thinking about how this is interconnected with each other. How the reason I have all this here is every single time you see that word Father talking about God show up in the Gospels, you're dealing with a pattern where it's perfectly connected with God. It's perfectly connected to Son. It's perfectly connected to Son in the Gospels and in the entire Bible. It's perfectly connected with my father in the Gospels and in the New Testament. And every single time, all those layers of patterns are weaving or woven together. Every single mention of father, it's it, like the fact that all of that could exist in one book is absolutely mind boggling. When this is the equation that Jesus Christ spoke to Peter representing complete forgiveness of sins. Okay, so here's John 6, 27, where it says, uh, For him hath God the Father sealed. That's the only time in the Gospels where God the Father is conjoined like that, where it's put together as one mention. You can't tell me that God and Father are just random words. They go directly together because that's who God is. God the Father, that's who he is in the Bible. You can't tell me that father and son are just arbitrary words to put together to get 70 times 7 mentions. That's not arbitrary. That's the least arbitrary thing possible. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Now once you get into Jesus, once you see this, how perfectly it interconnects into the text of the Bible. It connects. So what's going to happen is this. I'll just tell you now. So you can... So have a, have hope of watching this and have a reason to watch this. You're going to see how these patterns right here with Jesus and Father and Son are literally connected to each other. And I knew about these patterns before, like separately, but I had no idea they actually directly connect to each other. So you're going to see that that happens in the text of the Bible itself, which is how we know that this is God authenticating it. Okay. So in the first seven books, if you were to look up Jesus and Christ, you get 70 times 7 mentions plus 70 times 7 mentions in the first seven books. Okay, wow, that's pretty interesting. Especially when you look at the entire Bible, and Jesus by itself is mentioned 70 times 7 plus 70 times 7 times. Which means, again, if you think of the overlapping patterns, in the first seven books, all those mentions of Jesus overlap with all the mentions of Jesus in the entire Bible to produce this. And not only do you get 70 times 7 plus 7 times 7 mentions of Jesus in the Bible, you get it perfectly divided into odd and even books. So Matthew, Luke, Acts, so book number 1, book number 3, book number 5, book number 7, all the way to book number 27, Revelation. All the odd books, if you look at all the odd books and you count the amount of times that Jesus shows up, with or without the apostrophe, you get 70 times 7 times. And if you look at the even books, you get 70 times 7 times. The exact equation that Jesus speaks in the context of this is, represents the, the totality of forgiveness of sins. Who personifies forgiveness of sins? more than Jesus, more than the Father and the Son. But you're going to see it gets deeper than that. So, again, here, this is P10 and P11. Feel free to fact check that. Now, I, think I've I have covered this in a previous video, but I need to just real quickly show you how ridiculous this is, how impossible this is. If you look at the odd books of the New Testament, you get 55,000 more words which is almost the amount of words that show up in the even books. If you only get 62,000 words in even books, you get 55,000 more in odd books. So the fact that Jesus shows up perfectly divided into both of them, 
It makes you question how that happens. It forces you to look at, does this happen with anything else? With any other word? Is this just, you know, is this happening often? Is this just the style of the writing or what's going on here? And when you look it up, I have a list here of every single word that is mentioned 40 plus times in the New Testament. And you'll see that the anomaly doesn't ever happen with any other heavily mentioned word. Now, obviously, once you get down to the lower mentioned words, you're going to get run into more instances. For example, there's tons of words just mentioned two times in the New Testament. And obviously, you're going to get one in the odd and one in the even. Same thing with, you know, you have a whole bunch of words mentioned four times. You know, there's going to be some mentioned three times in the odd and one time in the even, but there's going to be a bunch mentioned two times in each. Same thing, I mean, if you were just go to the bottom of the list, yeah, of course, but with all these, it's like a, it's like a curve. Once you get to the top of that curve, that shouldn't be happening anymore because, for example, with the word the, obviously we have way more mentions in odd books because there's way more words in odd books and the, the is a common word in the New Testament. So the more common the word, you are going to get more mentions in odd books. So you can see that obviously when you go through this. And then when you, have, when you get to Jesus, it shows up perfectly, no matter how you go about it, whether it's with the apostrophe or not. 70 times 7 times, with or without the apostrophe, or if you exclude the, the possessive mentions of Jesus, and just look at Jesus singular, it's 485, 485. So no matter how you go about it, it's perfect. And by the way, with 485, that's how many times that Father and Son show up in the New Testament. In the, the Old Testament, there's five mentions of Father and Son. So in the New Testament, there's 485, which together gives you 490, but it's interesting how that, uh, how that is perfectly matching with that. But if you just go down this list, um, I have a couple notes here, you can go through it, but if you just go down this list, you'll see that I have every single anomaly where it does happen, I have it circled, but you don't see it happening. It doesn't happen until you get right here, the word can. Right after Moses, where it's 38 times to 38 times. And then the word live right before Abraham. It's interesting how Abraham and Moses both uh, <laughs> create that, div that dividing line and you just keep going and going and going it doesn't happen this is an anomaly at a very high scale like this is this shouldn't happen Jesus being one of the most common words in the New Testament showing up like that is pointing to his inspiration because it's pointing to the equation that he spoke in the text itself it's not just some random number. It's the exact equation that he spoke to Peter. Okay, so this is where things are going to start going coming together. Okay, this is where this just shouldn't happen. This is the 70 times 7th mention of Jesus. The halfway mention, because he's mentioned a perfect 70 times 7 times plus 7 times 7. We're looking at the halfway mention or the 70 times 7th mention of Jesus. And how it perfectly points to this pattern right here of father and son. Okay, so where does this happen? This happens in John 10, 32. In the middle of the passage where Jesus Christ is making perhaps the most, the boldest claim that he makes to the Jews in the New Testament in the Gospels. In John 10, 30, he says, I and my Father are one. And when he says that, look what the Jews do. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Because what Jesus just said is, he is equal to God. Now we see the 70 times 7th mention of Jesus. After he just declares... I and my Father are one. And what do we see? Father and Son, seven times seven mentions. I and my Father are one. Together they form seven times seven mentions. The 70 times seventh mention of Jesus is right after he declares that they are one. 
And when you put them together as one, they show up 70 times, seven times. Do you see that? Please tell me you see that. But it gets worse because watch what he does. He, he not, you, you see father, but you don't see the word son here, right? Look what Jesus says. So if we keep reading, it says, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified, and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God? Do you know what Jesus just did? Because I said, I am the Son of God. There's the mention of Son. He, well, he just said in verse 36 that this right here, I am the Son of God, is equivalent to this. I and my Father are one. So this mention of the 70 times 7th mention of Jesus is sandwiched between I and my Father are one and him claiming that this statement right here is means I am the Son of God. He is saying I am the Son of God when he says I and my Father are one. And that's the 70 times 7th mention of Jesus when he's asking them why are you stoning me? They pick up the stones because he says this. That's perfection. And watch how this builds. This is leading up to John 10. Before we got to this point, watch what happens. So in John 5, it says, But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him. So this is five chapters ago in John chapter 5. Because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. So they didn't take up stones to kill him yet, but they sought in their heart to kill him because at this point he was claiming to be God, but he didn't directly say it yet. So, and then in John 8 it says, Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. There's, there he's making himself equivalent to God again. The I am that appeared unto Moses in the bush. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So, the Jews pick up stones to kill Jesus, but then he hides himself. Here in John 10.30, however, when they pick up the stones to stone Jesus, Jesus confronts them, and he makes the bold statement that he is the Son of God. He and his Father are one. This is him declaring, I am the Son of God. This is him declaring, my, I and my Father are one. This is different than the other instances. This is him boldly showing who he is. And that is when this happens. When he is showing who he is. That's when you get this. And... You haven't even seen the greatest part yet of how this is validated in Matthew 18.22 itself. <laughs> how is this happening? In one book. This is where everything connects. And there are so many things going on here. Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. First of all, if you look at all mentions of brother in the King James Bible, and then if you look at all every single mention of 
every single form of the word forgive. So forgive, forgiveth, forgiving, forgave, forgave us, forgiveness, forgiveness. If you look at all of them, with the word brother, which again, look at how this is worded. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. Brother and forgive in all forms gives you 70 times seven mentions in the Bible. Which is literally just in the context. How many words do you think you can pull out of the Bible? Just two words. And say, okay, here's 70 times seven mentions. Just try and do it sometimes. Just try to pick two words and say, okay, here. Does that produce 70 times seven mentions? Chances are you're not going to get 70 times 7 mentions with just two random words. And these are not random. These are not arbitrary. These literally, you're supposed to forgive your brother 70 times 7 times. <laughs> and then when you look up the word sin, plus forgiven. Look it up. Check it for yourself. This is not just me making stuff up. I know I'm not searching. Usually in past videos, I, I just show you everything in the search program. I want you to search for it yourself and look at it for yourself. This is, this is not just me just making stuff up. Just go to your search program. Make sure that you have everything cleared here. Type in sin, forgiven. 490 mentions. 490 equals 70 times 7. Now, if we have forgive 70 times 7 in the New Testament, so if you look at, this is the same forgive that we were looking at with brother, right? So again, we're looking at these overlapping, these words that overlap with multiple patterns. In the entire Bible, that word forgive, it shows up the exact same amount of times in the New Testament, 70 times 7. I believe it's 123 each. So 123 mentions of forgive in all of its forms, and 123 mentions in the New Testament of 70 times 7. Okay, so how does it connect to the Father and the Son pattern? Who reveals to Peter that Jesus is the Son of God? The revelation from the Father to Peter, Jesus is the Son of God, happens in Matthew 16, 15 to 17. So this is Jesus talking. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? So Jesus talking to his disciples, his apostles. Whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. There he is. Peter says, Thou art the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. Who reveals to Peter that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? The Father. This relationship of 70 times 7 is revealed to Peter, specifically to him. And if that were not enough, these two passages are connected to each other in the text of the Bible itself. And this is just going to get crazier and crazier. So here I have on the left side Matthew 16. And here I have Matthew 18 on the right side. So on the right side... Down here in verse 21, 22, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. So here's Matthew 18 on the right side. And then Matthew 16 is over here where we were just reading. 
Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And let's keep reading. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And watch what happens. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. When I've... <laughs> When you first read that, you really don't know what it means. Like It's almost impossible to know what that means. I had no idea what that meant. I really don't think it's possible to know what that means until you read the passage about 70 times 7 in Matthew 18. Because look, first of all, if you look in the Gospels, right here in Matthew 16 and Matthew 18 are the only mentions of church. In the entire Gospels. I will build my church in Matthew 16 18 and in Matthew 18 17. And if you shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if you neglect to hear the church, that's the only mention of church in the entire Gospels. But then look at how it repeats this. It says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is talking about forgiveness of sins, and I'm going to prove it to you with the scripture itself. When you loose in earth, on earth, when you forgive somebody on earth, you are also forgiven of, by your Father in heaven in, this pa in these passages. And when you bind someone on earth, when you do not forgive somebody of their sins, you also are not forgiven of your sins by your Father in heaven. This is 100% when when it's revealed to Peter that Jesus is the Son of God, it's 100% pointing to the 70 times 7 passage. Okay, so back here in, so over here in Matthew 18, 15, it says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. So here we are again. This is with thy brother shall trespass against thee. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So this, he is still talking about this same thing about forgiving a brother who has trespassed against you. Okay, now watch how this builds. And again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times, Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. The reason Peter asked this to Jesus is because of what Jesus was just talking about up here, what we just read. If thy brother shall trespass against thee, and how to deal with that. And then when he says, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven, which is what he was just telling Peter two chapters ago, exactly the same wording. So, watch how Jesus shows that this is talking about forgiveness of sins. It says, And I will give unto thee, Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What are those keys? That, that's the question I keep asking myself. What are those keys? And then it says, Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So what, what do keys do? They lock and they unlock. They open and they shut which is what this is talking about, binding and loosing, putting them together in shackles, or letting go. This passage is related to the 70 times 7 passage. And 
The reason that I know for 100% certain that this is talking about loosing, forgiving, for forgiveness of sins is right after the 70 times 7 equation. All this goes together. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. But forasmuch as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and his children, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. There's the loosing. Remember, whatever, whatever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Okay? But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. So his, his fellow servant is doing the same thing that he just did to his master, to his Lord. And he, and he would not. But he went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. He binds him. He puts him in prison. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So because he bound on earth the man, he wouldn't forgive his, his brother on earth, he is not, he, he's also bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound. He, like, it comes upon his own head at the end of the day. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one of his brother their trespasses. So this passage, right after Peter is revealed that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus says this to Peter, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. This is directly associated with this passage of 70 times 7. Besides all that, if you look up at every single mention of Peter and seven and Jesus, the 70 times seventh mention is in Matthew 18, 22, Jesus. But here's, here's one of the, here, here's the clincher. Jesus says, <laughs> To forgive a brother 70 times, 7 times. When Peter denies Jesus, you know, how, you know how the story goes. Peter denies Jesus three times. The very first time is in the 7th, 70th verse in the Bible. Matthew 26, 70. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. This is Peter denying Jesus Christ, that he knows him. Because they were saying that, you know, this is, if we go back and read that in Matthew 26. It says, Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. So, the first time that a 70th verse shows in the Bible is number 7, number 770. And the seventh time that a verse 70 shows up in the Bible, the seventh time that a verse 70 shows up in the Bible, is when Peter sins against Jesus Christ and denies him. And goes back on his word saying that he would go with him to death. But Jesus, knowing 
and having prayed for Peter, already forgave him as he stood there denying him. And this is not just the seventh, seventieth verse in the Bible. This is the 980th verse of the New Testament, of the Gospels. 980 is 70 times 7 plus 70 times 7. How many times Jesus shows up in the Bible? This is the same Jesus that put a 666 on the devil in the wilderness. This is the same Jesus who in the 343rd verse of the New Testament, 7 times 7 times 7, said, I will give you rest. The first mention of rest. And then, immediately after that, when the Sabbath first shows up, he rebukes the Pharisees with the 7,777th verse of the Bible. This is the same Jesus who gave Peter the catch of 153 fishes, and then Peter shows up in 153 verses. Jesus knew verse numbers from the beginning, and it's demonstrated over and over and over again with these perfect alignments. Here we have Jesus on the 980th verse of the New Testament, which is the exact amount of times his name shows up. 70 times 7 plus 70 times 7. How could you say that's not Jesus Christ showing his love? His compassion. There's a second witness to it. In Mark, if you go to Mark 15, I think it is, or 14, maybe it's 14. Mark 14, 70. This is the second time. Another verse 70. Peter denied it again. This is the second denial. The mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. If you go to Luke 22, Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. This is when Jesus was being tried by the elders. But when that cock crew and Peter denied him thrice, Jesus went, just looked over at him. Have you ever denied Jesus? Have you ever been ashamed of him? Have you ever sinned against him? Realize that when you do that, he's looking at you. And he has forgiven you. Will you, will you receive that forgiveness? Will you humble yourself before him? Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him till seven times? Oh, Jesus is talking to Peter. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. There's just no words to describe it. This is not just showing the deity of Christ in context. This is showing his character. We do not know the Son of God. Only the Father can reveal him to you, and only he can reveal the Father.
But if that's happening right now, receive him, believe on him, and you will have everlasting life. And you will be saved, and you will pass over from death to life. Jesus himself says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sends me, hath, present tense, everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. The dead. Remember it said in... In uh, 1 John 5, 12, 13, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. If you don't have the Son of God, you're dead, and you're a servant of sin. And if you do not believe that Jesus can save you from your sins, you will die in your sins. But he has come that you can have life. He has come to rescue us to save us that's his name jehovah is salvation god's salvation he has come to save us from our sins so when we realize that every single time we have sinned against him we have been ashamed of him we've blasphemed his name we've blasphemed god we've broken his commandments at the cross he paid it all and he forgave us 70 times 7 days All we have to do is believe on Him. And there's nothing else we can do to have eternal life. To be with God in eternity forever. John 20, 31. Why, did, why is the Bible written to us? For these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. 1 John 4, 15 says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Believing that Jesus is just a prophet, you're not calling to the real Jesus. You're not calling to this Jesus. When you call out to the Son of God, who he is in truth, you can receive him in truth. You can receive the actual Son of God. My Savior. My Lord. My friend. And I pray that you do today if you are not already. That moment you realize that there is a God who died for you, who humbled himself and endured the cross, despised the shame, so that you could have everlasting life. The Son of God had to do that to get rid of your sin. Do you really think there's going to be any other way of getting rid of it? If he went to that extreme, there is no other way. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. So thank you for watching this. I'm sorry I didn't cover everything, but it's here. You can go through these notes. You can fact check it all. And I pray this was a blessing to you. May Jesus Christ be glorified.
and I hope to see you in heaven as we sing Alleluia. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. God bless. We'll see you in the next video. quickly my friend Joseph who runs pocket gospel tracks he's trying to run this thing but it's conflicting because he doesn't have enough time to do it I'm just trying to help him out I'm trying to help him get to the point where he is stable monthly income so we're going to be contributing to him or praying that others if God leads you to to help get the gospel out their got their tracks go out to tons of different countries I'll put them on the screen here it would be a great blessing if you were able to, even just if it's just a small amount, contribute something monthly, something that's you know steady that he can depend upon. You can run this thing full time. So if God puts it on your heart to help get the gospel out through this ministry, uh, I'll put a link to their website below. And if you're not asking me to do this, like this is the gospel, like this is what we need to be getting out. So if you'd like to help him with that, please consider. Uh, contributing monthly they have details in their instructions in their website so check that out and thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video